three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. Arthur, you want to have a test of it? Welcome to Soccer Roundup. One, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello.
two games here in less than a week for the Oakley Cannons after getting back to business and winning against the Altona Magic on Monday night. They look aside, ready to make this a fortress again. Green Gully come to town and while they haven't got too bad a record against Oakley over the last 10 years, this is always a tough place to come. And with a couple of former Green Gully marksmen lining on the upper, on the opposite side of things rather tonight, it looks a real test for the side from out west as they will look to come here and take something. Although coming to Oakley and leaving with anything is always a tough ask. It's Friday night MPL Men's Victoria football from Jack Edwards Reserve. It's Oakley and Green Gully. Olive Walk Peel is my name. Alongside me is Arthur Akratides. And Arthur, Oakley have had quite the start to the season with games being abandoned and rescheduled. They had no supporters allowed in here on Monday night, but we've got a Friday night. Oakley back in front of the fans and they'll look to keep it rolling. Yeah, there was um, quite outstanding first half by Oakley Cannons on uh, Monday, mo Monday afternoon there and uh, they really raced to a 3-0 victory, uh, a 3-0 lead, I should say. And um, Altona Magic came back in that second half and uh, made it a little tougher for Oakley Cannons, but in the end, um, you know, deserved winners 3-1. And really, in my mind, they'll be definitely one of the teams to beat this year. But, you know, Green Gully, as you said to me earlier, have had a few um, good results early on. And uh, the addition of uh, Luca Tavir is from Port Melbourne has been a really good addition to them and um, no doubt he'll have to play a big part today for them to try and make a dent into Oakley Cannon's uh, shield. Certainly will. He's part of the Green Gully 11 tonight. We'll start with the Cannon's 11, given that they are the home side and they are unchanged from Monday's win against Daltona. It'll be Nick Feely in goal, the back four of Kingsley Sinclair, Brody Boyce, Hamish Miller and Emlyn Wellsmore. It'll be Oliver Kubelay in Cam McGill in the double pivot in front of them, Joe Guest, and the front three of Minip Adis and Pierce Waring flanking Alex Salmon. And so Green Gully in goal will go with Liam Driscoll. Back four of Jay Charmer, Taylor Shriver, Jalil Regay, and Adolf Kadakpo. Midfield three of Thierry Irudakunda, Jamie Latham, and Josh Hope. Front three of Luca Tavir, Mo Adam, and Jan Luca. Ianucci, who comes into the side, one of two changes with Taylor Shriver's back in as well after serving suspension last week. So Messrs. Salmon and Waring up top for Oakley. Both for, formerly have worn green gully, green and white as well as we're underway here on Friday Night Football at Jack Edwards. Part of a five-game slate in Victorian top, uh, top flight football, two in the men's top flight and three in the MPLW Victoria, which returns tonight. Here is Pierce Waring, who top scored in the league for Green Gully with 13 last season. Wellsmore looking to send one in towards the back post, bounced in front of Driscoll, but he was able to claim. Voice now wearing put forward in hope rather than expectation from the Queenslander in Brody Boyce, his second season with Oakley. It's been turned over. Guest Salmon, nice interplay. Ball didn't quite have enough on it for Manibadis as Taylor Shrivers saw it out of play. Salmon hits it first time, let it run across his body, but the shot well wide. And Alex Salmon with a CV that precedes him. Top scorer. In the MPL era for Green Gully, scored 43 in 65 league games. And scored here early last season against Green Gully in his first league game in Oakley Blue. Someone that Green Gully know all too well and will 
certainly have to watch tonight. Here he is again, Salmon, first time for Munir Vedas. At the edge of the box, struck it straight to Driscoll, who could only parry away. Hope trying to hook it clear, and eventually they'll get it away as far as Tavia, who will look to find Mo Adam, who was able to keep his opponent in Kingsley Sinclair honest. Here's Oli Kubale. Plays in board for Adis down the inside left channel. Manib Adis down low and through Liam Driscoll. Oh, clear away early. Fired low from Manib Adis, who's adapted to life here at Jack Edwards so well to start this campaign. And I dare say that's one Liam Driscoll will want back. One he couldn't keep out. And it's business as usual for the Cannons here at Jack Edwards. Well, you've got to say, um, that initial goal kick uh, that uh, went straight uh, to Manir Badus, um, and then he forced a great save from uh, Driscoll. Then the ball's gone wide, and uh, all of a sudden the ball's gone back to the same player. And in the second attempt, he's made sure, and a common occurrence here is that the Cannons are, are ahead and uh, in danger again there. The gully, something they really didn't want so early on here. Very rarely see an Oakley Cannons team lose when they go up so early here at uh, Jack Edwards Reserve. And uh, as you said, Oliver, there's uh, a lot of firepower up there for the Cannons. And this young man who's come to the Cannons this year has really torn it up down that left-hand side. Very much impressed me this season. And he's only made this team even more and more attack-minded. Ball played down the line. Easily mopped up all the way back to Feely. And a long clearance by him. There's a bit of a wind going um, down the ground, probably assisting... Green Gully from right to left of screen, the wind is going. So, considering that, uh, Philly, a nice big clearance into the wind. Long throw, headed away. Trying to find uh, Wellsmore. Good work there by Waring. Waring goes all the way back. Trying to build up again and turning his back there was wearing, losing the ball. Chance now for Kiyama, plays it back. Kadapko really has to make himself known in that defensive line because he has uh, a very, very sharp marksman there in Salmon who also scored on uh, Monday, Oliver. Certainly did. Got two. Of Oakley's three, the other going to Pierce Waring. Well played by Tavia. Shrivers and now Mo Adam. Severe in field with him. It was a nice step over. Good feet there from the former Port Melbourne man in Mo Adam, who won the free kick for his side. is with a chance to restore parity potentially here. Minucci to send it in. Headed clear by McGill. Back again with Luca Tavia. 
Ty, it's him as Kubele who forces him all the way back to Driscoll. Played out of play. One thing to note for Green Gully. You've got Kadakpo leading the line. I've seen him play as a fullback or a wing back in his time in Victorian football as a winger. Also showing he can play through the middle as well. Looks as though it's Hiradakunda as part of that back four. Looking to get things moving is Hope. Calls for offside, fall on deaf ears. Mo Adam looking to send it in towards the middle, but only as far as Nick Feely. Hope. Tavia. Yanucci. Well played by Wellsmore, who wants the throw, won't get it, according to the referee. Radakunda. Over for Shrivers. Adam. Along with the former Reading youngster in Liam Driscoll. Green Gully gets away from the Oakley pressure. Fall down the line though, and that's going straight back to the cannons. You see, I, I, I just think they're really going to try and uh, play properly with this win because all their passes have really been wasted uh, at the moment. Oliver going way, way down the ground straight to Nicholas Feely and really not finding a way through to the feet of the forward line. Some good work there by Gadabko. And uh, an Oakley throw. It's turned out to be not a bad crowd here. You know, we're pushing, uh, I'd say, close to a 1,000 people. And uh, good to see a good turnout for this evening's football game. We've got other games also on today. Dandenong battle with Dandenong City and Dandenong Thunder. And early on, it was 1-0 uh, up to Dandy Thunder. As the Cannons try and go forward. Good work there. It's clear away by Irakunda. He's a solid uh, unit, is that man. No doubt uh, settled a bit more now and uh, made it a little more harder for the Cannons to go forward. They're not doing as they like and uh, trying to build up again is Wellsmore. Long ball forward. Guest can't uh, get that return ball. Had a fine season already. As that man guessed, he is really, really the barometer of this Oakley team. Oliver, I think uh, probably, in my mind, one of the top three players in the league. And it has been that way, hasn't it, since he arrived in Australian shores? Already four goal contributions this season with a goal and three assists, a former gold medalist as well.
one of two players in the Oakley team, formerly of Curzon Ashton in England, also Connor Hampson, who makes a return to the matchday squad tonight. He's on the bench for Oakley. Guest making his 100th MPL men's Victoria appearance in round one of the campaign. McGill over towards Guest. Wellsmore. Header not going where he intended. Boys helping it out of play. McGill fouling severe as the two number eights were in the vicinity of the ball. Chance for Gianluca Iannucci to perhaps work his magic. Scored a late winner here. A couple of seasons back now. The last time Green Gully won here, it was an absolute perler. They won that game late. Floats that one in, but only into the waiting arms of Nick Feely. Who looks to... Set his side away immediately. That one is rather hacked out of play by Jay Chama. Probably should have left that uh, go out. I mean, it was a chance for him to just let it go out and take the throw in. Oliver Kubele looking to roll it forward. Almost broke there for Salmon. Sliding in Wellsmore. Kubele and back with Boyce. Waring. As Ian McGilp get their wires crossed. Oh, Adam unable to run it down. Just to update things in the MPL men's Victoria competition, we'll keep you across that game and the three in the MPL women's Victoria as well. Dandenong Thunder have now gone two up. At Frank Hollihan. That's now at half time, so that would be some result for Adam Pinnock and his charges. Here is Josh Hope away from Wellsmore. That ball just about stays alive. Free kick for Oakley. We had a similar scenario last week, didn't we, early on here? When Oakley played Altona, Altona thought that the ball had gone out and Minibadis kept the ball in, pulled it back for Alex Salmon, and that was 1 0. Once more, it's a judge of that one. Stayed in play. Tavia looking to roll it forwards. Potentially a chance for Kadakpo. Referee saying that the ball had been won. It's gone behind for a corner. Joseph Carlos is the man in the middle. Made sure he took his time to make the right call, but certainly a corner ball and then another dead ball. Could present a chance for Green Gully to draw themselves back level. Come on, Cannon! Yeah! Iannucci sending it in, but it away by McGill. Joel 
Rigay was offside. Oakley, no mood to wait around. Kubelay rolling it forward, looking for Guest. There's Joe Guest! Joe Guest doubling Oakley's lead. And if you're in opposition defence, Oakley's number 10 is not the person you want to see bearing down on your goal. Clinically done first time. And the Oakley Cannons opening up some breathing space here back in front of their home faithful. And what a great ball there by Kublai. Finding, weaving his magic, threading the needle. And uh, that man, as I said again, Joe Guest, basically said, be my guest. Here you go. Number two for Oakley Cannons. We've been playing just on 18 and a half minutes here at Jack Edwards Reserve and the home side have scored again and uh, I'd have to say against the run of play in that uh, sense where the game was slowly turning not so much to the strength of uh, Green Gully but they looked a, a lot more dangerous and uh, had a bit of the ball but that's what Oakley do to you they have false sense of security and Bit of magic there, as I said, by Kubelay. And uh, really, Joe Guest makes it 2-0. And here we go again. Some good work to get it forward by Waring. Salmon. McGlip. Ball charged down. And the throwing given claims by Kadapko that uh, it was his throw, but uh, not being. And going forward again. Oakley slowly turning the screws here. Wells Moore taking the throw. Bit of a one-two there. Wind blowing, as you can see, straight to the right side of the ground. The gully throw. Green Gully really need to throw the cat amongst the pigeons here. Nothing to lose. They've conceded four goals last week. Can ill afford to concede goals uh, at this rate because... It'll only be a mountain too high to climb. And they knew it was going to be tough, but uh, really, they haven't troubled Philly at all. And uh, at the moment, there's no flow in Green Gully's game. Trying to really chisel something out here. The foundation. Guest. Wellsmore did well. Chance again. Can they get the shot on goal? And... The shot goes just wide to the right-hand side of the goal. And Oliver, it could have been three. It was good work from Alex Salmon, wasn't it? Dragged his shot in the end, didn't it? Went way wide in fairness, but how many times have we seen Alex Salmon do that in green and white as opposed to against green and white? A couple of score updates in the MPLW victory as well there's only two games as opposed to three as was mentioned before so it's a two game slate we'll get to those in the next break in play wearing now Kubelay A 
Chris Miller. Feely, that was nice and composed. And a lot of other goalkeepers might have sent the ball away as far as possible. He said turned Adolf Kadakpo. And the MPW Victoria, as I was teasing before, Heidelberger a goal up against Alamein and Box Hill a goal up against Brunswick Juventus, who are in the top flight of women's Victorian football this year. As Alex Salmon gives chase, a foot race that both he and Thierry Iradakunda were participating in, but the touchline went out in. Miller, looking for the ball over the top, and he just giving chase, Shriver's winning out, he's then forced to play it, Minibadis scoring his first league goal for Oakley earlier on tonight, but he's been involved in plenty of others, he's doubled his NPL men's Victoria goal tally tonight as well, because he only had the one goal coming in tonight, one goal that he scored for Bentley last season. Oliver, um, that uh, earlier twist and turn by Nicholas Philly reminded me of Manuel Neuer. Because he's pretty good at doing that. And um, it hasn't really been troubled other than that today at the moment. I'll tell you what, Manuel Neuer's had plenty of accolades in his career, but I wonder if being mentioned in NPL Men's Victoria broadcast tops it. There's a yellow card. Flashed out by Astros Carlis, the first one of the night going the way of Taylor Shrivers. Who has seen red earlier this season. The majority of games that Green Gully seem to play, they seem to have someone sent off. Which hasn't really helped their cause. Kuku serving a suspension of his own after he was sent off last week against Altona. Just over the free kick. Sent in high towards Sam and it eluded everybody in the middle. That ricochet back off the youngster in Jay Chiama. going over, play going on. Waring doing really well, looking for the cutback and 
winning a corner of Jalil Regeig. Sent in towards the front post. And that one behind this time for a goal kick. A few Port Melbourne players um, that have come over to Green Gully this season after the overhaul of the Port Melbourne team that hasn't really done too badly this season. Very big game tomorrow night there at uh, Port Melbourne down at Shark Park uh, with the Heidelberg Warriors and promises to be a nice healthy crowd free kick now to Gringully in a very dangerous position considering this wind chance now to try and get it into the box Jamie Latham over the ball. Will he ever go or will he go for that back post? And uh, the ladder, back post ball. No one really there. And the upside flag's gone up. And you'd have to say that was a wasted chance. And uh, chances... A few and far between here for Gringully. Score still remains 2-0 here at uh, Jack Edwards Reserve. And we've got uh, just, just under 30 minutes gone. Home side really doing as they please. A chance now. Trying to get the ball into the box then, Guest. Twisting and turning. Good defending, though. Throw in. What can they manifest here, the Cannons? Distant throw. Headed away. And a uh, bit of an up and under clearance. Still, the Cannons will try and come away with it. And once again, not really dealt with there by Green Gully. Only now they get the ball forward. Kadapko making a run here. No, the ball's gone the opposite way. And uh, really, Muhammad. Adam, not really seeing much of the ball at the moment. He, uh, we know he's capable of uh, some wonderful things, but at the moment there's nothing really to show for any of uh, Green Gully's forward thrusts. Another one, formerly Port Melbourne as well, Martin. Lovely bit of control by Salmon outside of the football looking for Joe Guest who went to play it first time across the face of goal. Adis arriving at the back post but good bit of defending by Green Gully to keep him out of it. A couple of defenders watching his every move which is wise when you've got a player like Manib Adis. They're ready and waiting to take a chance because we've seen already tonight how good he can be when put in those positions. Driscoll assertive. Boys let it bounce and dealt with it well in the end to nod it back to Nick Feely. And 
Andrews header back. Salmon for Pierce Waring, who looked to curl one. It would have been spectacular, but in the end was a fair way wide. Given a little bit of space at the edge of the box, Pierce Waring. Who would have some former teammates to contend with tonight. I'm sure they were happy last season that they only had to line up on him in training. Now a different story. Latham, Pope, over towards the right hand side for Mo Adam, who has swapped wings. Adam just about lost it to Pierce Waring, back doing his defensive duties. Pope on the turn. Now with Luca Tavia. Towards Yanucci inside the area. Looked to go one way, then the other. He went over, but the ball had been won in the process. Ball given away. That one out of play and behind for a green gully corner. Emlyn Wellsmore, usually more composed than that in defence. Yanucci with the resulting corner. towards the middle and the header was won in the end by someone wearing green and white in the end Jalil Regeig unable to divert the header goalward and for all of their possession Arthur they've not really tested Nick Feely in the Oakley goal and that's something you've got to do if you want to take something Especially when coming here. Yeah, there's been absolutely um, zero attempts on goal, really. Uh, hasn't seen anything or been anything that uh, worth of note. They're toiling away, but uh, that's really not uh, enough here at uh, Jack Edwards Reserve. You need to pressure and pressure hard Luca Tavia really needs to get into this game a lot more as does that man Kadabko trying to switch play here what can they do and that'll be a free kick a bit of a rash challenge the yellow card coming out yep no just a chatting too, maybe bringing out his magic spray, the one they use to mark the ground these days. This needs to really test the keeper. You've got hope in there as well. Ugagu is there too. The header, still in play. Can he get it into the box? And only as far as the throw. And an attempt uh, by Cameron McGlib to try and clear that ball and get onto it. There's a return. What uh, sides has Manib? Through school plays it wide. Still not been allowed to play their natural game. Green Gully. Ball changed here to Tiama. Chance now to go forward for Yanuji. Can he get it into the box? Ball by Hope in the middle. And the shot. 
Claims for a handball and surely wishful thinking, Oliver. I think that's one way to put it. Latham. Over towards Shrivers. Now back with the Welshman in Jamie Latham, formerly of Moreland City, of course. So an ex Swansea City Academy member. Yanucci. Charmer was looking to get around him, but in the end. The two teammates not on the same page. Fine away by Feely. Radakunda winning his header unopposed. McGill rides one challenge, looks for Raiders. Good work by Charmer to intercept. Hope, away from one, sliding challenge from Boyce was effective and back the other way, come Oakley, Guest, wearing to his left, Salmon arriving in the middle, still Pierce wearing, looks to send it in low and won't get a second opportunity as Irodakunda helps away. Aidas, happy to have a run at Sharma, broke back for him, Kubale, Salmon, Kubale can't get out here, Salmon, Oli Kubale, once more Pierce Waring, looking to drive in field, McGill, Oakley looking to tease Green Gully out. Guess went over and Jamie Latham, the offender, straight into Astro Sakalis' book. And you could just sense the frustration there from not only Jamie Latham but the rest of his Green Gully teammates because. Oakley were just popping the ball around and something had to give. And it is the man who was fouled in Joe Guest standing over the dead ball. What's the chances that uh, this man will go for that uh, absolutely exquisite free kick that he is so well known for? You wouldn't put it past him. Guest! There you go! He's one of the best Victorian football has ever seen in doing just that. Amazing stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Joe Guest is and always has been a footballing marvel. And he's added another goal to his incredible repertoire and incredible highlight reel. This man is something special. The Oakley Cannons fans absolutely love him. And if you're new to Victorian football, it won't take you long to see why. Adis one way then the other. Oakley turning on the style and then some. My word, they're fun to watch. One forward looking for Adis, won't get there. Tavia. Almost running into trouble. And I thought, uh, Oliver, that um, Driscoll was a little late going for that ball and it, he did get a hand on it, but he didn't get a 
big hand on it and it went in. I think it was more on how good the free kick though rather than the goalkeeping being so par in my opinion it's a brilliant goal from Guest and I would say you're a bit like Nostradamus calling that one but given it's Joe Guest I won't give you too much credit given that you almost expect nothing less And yet again, they're 3-0 up, uh, as they did on Monday night. Of course, they were 3-0 up against Altona originally before the game was abandoned. They were 3-0 up when it was replayed, and they're 3-0 up again. So they're making a bit of a habit of doing that. We're about to move into... Two additional minutes once the 45 have been played. Josh Hope is fouled. I'll give through to Nick Feely who has had absolutely nothing to do so far tonight. The distribution wasn't his best though. Former A-League's goalkeeper, Nick Feely, played four times in the Australian top flight for Perth Glory. Hope, away from a couple, did that well. Shrivers, Severe all the way back with Iradakunda. Chiyama, we're into the first of those two minutes now. Broke kindly for Kubalay, wearing to his left. Wearing towards Adis and got through to him. He lashed it straight to Driscoll and Salmon was expertly kept out by Liam Driscoll. How in the world is that not 4-0? Liam Driscoll, perhaps at fault for the first Oakley goal, was certainly not at fault there. Making himself as big as possible. Sprawling out to save that effort from Salmon. Oakley almost 4-0 up and Green Gully have got their goalkeeper to thank that it isn't. Latham. It's a play of Kingsley Sinclair and if we haven't had the absolute sucker punch so far in this first half, it feels like we have with the third but that would have been it. Liam Driscoll doing well to give Green Gully even a sliver of hope as it's played in board for Mo Adam with a bit of space. Looking to work himself a yard, Mo Adam. That was deflected on route and behind for a corner. And maybe that Liam Driscoll save has sparked the Green Gully outfielders into life. Hey, Jimmy, can you. Um, it's a good piece of work there from Mo Adam to work himself space for a shooting chance. Maybe with the. You, uh, Final act in anger of this thing? first half. Green Gully with a chance to get one back. Okay, um, just meet Nicoletta at the, the tunnel um, and just tell her to go to, um, to Louis and grab the bag and give it to Jordan. Ian Uchi to send it in. Floated in towards the back post. Shrivers headed it high. Feely called for it and claimed. And that will be half time. Oakley. At their clinical best, an absolute masterclass in how to play in the MPL Men's Victoria competition from the Cannons. Three goals to the good, it could have been more. And the team clad in blue, absolutely ruthless 
in the first half here at Jack Edwards Reserve. At half time here in this NPL Men's Victoria Clash, it's Oakley 3, Green Gully 0. And Arthur, you just marvel watching this team play, don't you? They just play the ball around, they make however many passes, they string them all together, and in the end, it usually leads to at least a chance, and if not worse, for their opposing side a goal. I mean, in the end, this is what brings people to the game. That kind of football they play are very, very good to watch, and it's uh, a credit to their coach, um, Chris Taylor, and uh, his staff. And uh, no doubt, in my mind, they will be in the top two this season and uh, will be definitely pushing for a championship. The kind of football they're playing at the moment, and you can't uh, say that they, they haven't... Uh, got that kind of potential just to go around the grounds one final time before we go to a break it's one apiece between Box Hill and Brunswick Juventus in the MPLW Victoria Heidelberg still holding on to a 1-0 lead against Alamein and it's still 2-0 for the Dandenong Thunder in the Dandy Derby against their near neighbours Dandenong City here at Jack Edwards Reserve it's 3-0 for the Oakley Cannons we will take a short break see you in about 10 minutes or so from Jack Edwards Reserve
match reserve. Uh, at half time, it's Oakley three, Green Gully nil, a double for Joe Guest. Also, goal for Manip Adis in the first half. So, Oakley romp to a 3 0 lead. Green Gully have hardly fired a shot at Nick Feely. He hasn't had a save to make, really, up to this point. Just a bit of trivia for you. Green Gully's heaviest ever NPL men's Victoria away defeat came here. It was a 6 1 game back in 2014, which included a double from Nathaniel Foster Bowen. We're back in the first year of the NPL men's Victoria competition. Other goal scorers were Evan Christodoulou, Goran Zoric, Andreas Govas, and Dusan Bosniak as we're underway in this second half. We'll have to see whether Oakley can match, if not better, that result from 10 years ago. That'll be something that Green Gully will desperately want to avoid. McGill looking to get the ball to Salmon and there was an arm up from McGill. that Oakley have also won three games by a score of six goals to nil in the last ten years of league football. Perhaps a chance to make that four here. Adis blocked by Iradakunda. And behind for a green gully corner. Joe Guest set to send this one in as scorer looks to turn provider. Whipped in towards the front post. Waring just about able to keep it alive. Back with Joe Guest. Kubale not fully dealt with and Wells Moore will send that one out of play. It's gone out for a throw in fact. So, Emily Wellsmore, we've seen him score once this season, even though that goal was waved off. It was a perler against Altona in the first clash that was, of course, abandoned, and that one then falls on the kitchen floor. But that effort there, not mirroring that, as Salmon goes into the box. Turned by Adis, was lovely, and that would have been a glorious goal had Adis found the far corner. It may well have done had it not taken a deflection. Behind for another corner. And hasn't Manib Adis had himself a game tonight? Absolutely brilliant turn. And uh, really only inches wide there. Had uh, everyone at sixes and sevens. Curling corner. And it's only getting harder here for the Cavaliers. Green Gully really really finding it hard to keep the cannons at bay and uh, a bit windy here now and uh, that uh, nice evening that we had is all of a sudden become a cool breeze you're telling us that uh, the change of season is near. That's better play there from Gully trying to get the ball out of their defensive half and maybe cause an opening. Good work there by Latham. And once again, the referee has called the free kick, rightly so. And... Uh, Need to try and take the game up a little bit to uh, uh, Oakley Cannons. I mean, look, they might not win the game, but just try and show a little more fight because they they can't seem to be doing that. Now the ball's been stolen. 
A chance by Guest and maybe should have gone alone. Still a chance there for Waring. He loses the ball. Moa Dem there, playing it central to Yanucci. Pulled back. And it given away. One again. Can they find an opening here? It's like prizing up an opening a safe. Uh, although it's uh, very tough to break that uh, defensive line of the Oakley Cannons. It's given away by Radakunda. McGill with Guest to his left and Salmon to his right. It's Alex Salmon. It's four. And Alex Salmon, the former Green Gully man, scores here against his former side for two years in a row. It seemed rather inevitable that he'd find himself on the score sheet before the night was done. And now he has. And all of a sudden, this night is going from bad to worse. And the scoreline that I mentioned off the top from 10 years ago, that 6-0 defeat that Green Gully were on the wrong end of, may well be about to repeat itself. And it looks like the salmon are on the bite. <laughs> I suppose Green Gully look like fish out of water. And I think that'll be where we'll leave the aquatic puns for now. And there'll be no sense from an Oakley point of view of putting the cue in the rack here, so to speak. They'll want to go for more and more and more because that's not only what this side does, it's what a Chris Taylor-led side does. Plenty of time for Oakley to get a couple more on the board. Those playing along at home, it's Alex Salmon's 18th goal since swapping Green Gully for Oakley. He's coming up to a milestone appearance wise as well. He's playing game 94 in the Victorian top flight tonight. Here he is on the ball, looking for Guest. A couple of players now on a hat trick trying to combine there. In that 6 0 that I mentioned off the top, there was a brace in that game too from Nathaniel Foster Bowen, and there's Two braces here as well. And you wouldn't bet against either of them making it a hat trick. As Green Gully will go to the bench in a moment or so, not before this corner has been played in. Sent in towards the back post, headed back square. And Green Gully should eventually get clear. Well controlled by. Soon to be brought on Justin Spiteri. And there were some slight worries from us up here on the country that we were in trouble here, but aiding those fears. Green Gully's number 19, who will take the place of Green Gully's number 22, Adolf Kadakpo. And Justin Spiteri, who started the game against Altona last week for Green Gully, on now. It's his 28th appearance in the Victorian top flight. Green Gully Academy graduate, came through the junior system at Green Gully Reserve, so certainly one of their own. Been put into a tough scenario here tonight, though. Inucci in board for Hope, first time ball forwards. The shot on goal was driven low. From Kadakpo. I think I said Adolf Kadakpo had gone off. My apologies, it was 
Thierry Eredekunda, which, in terms of a shape point of view, it makes way much more sense. to play. Bit of conjecture over where the throw should go. And it's sloppily given away. Here's Oli Kubele. Forward of him was Guest. Broke kindly for Kubele, whose shot was charged down. Guest looking for the hat trick. Scrambling around the six yard box. Salmon onto his left, straight to the keeper. How in the world is that not five? It was like a shooting gallery. And Green Gully somehow get away with that one. Still coming to terms with how. All from a stray throw, which really, again, Driscoll has made a save that really he shouldn't have. It, absolutely brilliant save. And here we go again. A chance now for the Cannons. And, then, you know, like, that's uh, the second Im amazing save that he's made. And uh, really, Green Gully are just struggling to come to terms with these forward thrusts. Spiteri trying to find a way. Iannucci. Now with Latham. Slight chuckle. Twitter's on the gantry as Arthur's coffee goes all over his nose. A commentator's nightmare. Mo Adams offside. Now a time for Arthur to clean your notes up and for everyone else to compose themselves. And while we can't show you the, the notes, it looks like one of those old maps you get from a long, long time ago that ones that sort of make at school or remake at school when you get the tea bag out and stay in the paper. As Dealey takes the resulting free kick after the offside. As Alex Salmon then gives a free kick away himself. Green Gully have it back. Over towards the left-hand side for Oyanucci. Who then ran out of room. And that's quite emblematic of how tonight's gone for Green Gully, really. They haven't really managed to get into any attacking positions. And when they have, it's petered out to nothing. night that they'll want to continue to look back on really and there's still over half an hour of the 90 to go you said that this is quite isn't ideal preparation for a clash against the Dandenong Thunder next week Sinclair out wide for Minibadis. They'll send it in towards the middle on Mark Pierce wearing. And there's plenty in attendance, not least himself, who would be amused as to how that one's gone wide. You'd 
back him in from there 99 times out of 100, but that one unable to get past Liam Driscoll into the back of the net. Spiteri. It's to veer to receive. Alfianucci, given away by the former Port Melbourne man, Waring, was then clipped by Luca Tavia. He was one that we both earmarked as one to watch out for from a green gully point of view tonight, but hasn't really been able to make an impact on this game. But then again, no one else wearing green and white has either. It's a squad laden with quality, but tonight they haven't quite been at their best as Adas works his way away from Spiteri, then looking to drive clear of Josh Hope. Adas has won his side a corner. There were some shouts for handball there. And while we have a half-decent view of it up here, a person with a much better view of it is Astro Sakalis, and he was very quick to award the corner. It's in and headed wide in the end by Alex Salmon. Terry. It's play from Sinclair. Throws down the line. Adam. He hit the floor. And free kick according to the referee. Guest. First time ball looking for Alex Salmon. Can get through to him. The goal scorers tonight. Adis. Salmon and a double from Guest. Oakley about to make a change of their own in a moment. All out wide looking for Hope. Green Gully wants a free kick, won't get it. It'll be a double switch for Oakley in a moment. Gets through to Josh Hope, Feely off his line, and Hope gets one back for Green Gully. The forward players in green and white have had absolutely nothing to feed off all night. 
And one of Nick Feely's first real acts of the game is to pick the ball out of the back of his net. Josh Hope, who is a player Green Gully would want in that position, makes good on the chance and brings the margin back to three. Still a long way to go for them to get back into the game. As now that double switch will take place, Cam Gilp will be replaced by Noah Holmes. And Jacob Eliopoulos will also make his way on to take the place of Hamish Miller. So still a long way to go for Green Gully, but there's something for them to hold on to there. And in the end, um, second shot on goal, and uh, they've got their goal. And whether that was a bit of a, a lucky break there, they all count. Hope did well to finish it. The ball forward. Deep ball into the box, cleared away. Guest. Handball given. Might jolt him into a bit of action here. And uh, you know what? It's uh, probably about uh, 25 to go and plenty of time to try and make a dent into the scoreline. Chance now going forward. Spateri. He's done well since he's come on. Kadako. Oh, the shot. And that's a corner. Just gone wide. And to be honest with you there, Philly looked beaten. Ball across the box. And uh, as I said, young Spiteri, the ball out to Kadapko. And uh, in the end, the corner given. Yanucci about to take that corner. And a deep one at that, cleared away. And the Cannons try and go forward. Uh, not what you call a great pass. Driscoll, charged down. His clearance wasn't the greatest. Still. Chance to change play here. Gully trying to move the ball quickly now. Trying to catch out the Cannons. He calls keep the ball, keep the ball. And that's the correct way. You keep the ball. There's every chance you could... Uh, Make an attack. A ball into the box. A good ball at that. Flag stayed down across the box. And in the end, safely across. Ushered through there by Nicholas Feely. 68 minutes gone. And a bit uh, brisk here now, uh, Ollie. It's probably... Next time we come here, we might need to bring a jacket or two. I said this is more my climate, being an Englishman, than what we had before. Spiteri has been a bright light since coming off the bench for Green Gully. Goes in boards. Lucci. Latham looking for Adam, but in the meantime, free kick had been... Given away by Spiteri. Nah, nah. nah not about round, I don't know about round two, though. Is this, is this bench again. Shifa Ahmed, who will be coming on here for Green Gully to make his third appearance of the season in the league. He will come on for Mo Adam. It's 
Salmon. Valentini back for Alex Salmon. Helped away by McKay, but no, 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 to play for a corner. This will be enough time for the change. Sent in high. Kubelay. Don't quite send that back in, and that will present space for the change, Mo Adam. Much like his teammates up forward for Green Gully tonight, been rather quiet. Good to see, as you mentioned a little bit away from the mic, that Green Gully are giving some of their next generation a run. Chief Ahmed only 17 and doesn't turn 18 while September. Not many 17-year-olds playing football at this level, so fair play to him. He's got about 20 minutes plus stoppage time to make an impact on this game. Despite his side being well in arrears, Tavia. Lucky with a ricochet. Uh, wide to Iannucci. He looked to catch, feeling napping and almost did it. from Shrivers, we're looking for Iannucci, but we're out to play. And Green Gully have had a few chances since bringing it back to 4-1. They had that one with Swateri that was turned behind that it looked as though he was about to make it 4-2. The one there from Iannucci that was really only a half chance until it wasn't. Oh. He'll be ordered back. Salmon. It's eventually call back for a handball. The referee admitted that he didn't see, but there was someone else in his team who did. Salmon, now Minibadus. Minibadus driving into the box. Good save by Salmon, or by Driscoll rather. Salmon received the ball, or almost did, as Green Gully scrambled to clear. I'll tell you what, as good as Alex Salmon is, I'm not sure he could do as good a goal as good in goal. Nathan looking for the back flick. Minucci. Spiteri. And we'll get through to Feely. Let's have some other scores from the second tier of Victorian football. Bentley Green's 2 and up against Preston. That's not a bad result. If that stays, where are we? And Langwarren are goalless. Kingston City have a 2 1 lead away at Brunswick City. Dandenong Thunder have won by two goals to one against Dandenong City. Ahmed. Guest. Tavia wins it back. It's Luca Tavia who saw his name in headlights. In the end only. Sent it well over the top. I tell you what, it's been a much improved second half showing from Green Gully. The problem is, Arthur, that the game was well gone by half time. Yeah, I mean, look. 
Pat's taken off, I mean, I think ever since Spiteri's come on, um, it just seems to have given them a bit of a drive on this right-hand side. And with Iannucci as well, they've had a bit more avenues to goal. A bit of a head clash here. Hopefully everything's all right. Ball stopped and uh, game stopped for safety of the... Um, The Green Gully player. It's Jalil Regaig, the player down. Game was immediately stopped, so the Green Gully defender could receive some treatment. Last thing Green Gully would want would be an injury, which would further compound how bad this night has been for them. Particularly to Jalil Regay, who is one of their more important players. And that's particularly pertinent when you consider that Green Gully haven't kept a clean sheet since the opening weekend of the season against Moreland City so if their defensive stocks get any weaker then that increases the problem for Green Gully yeah, now, as you said earlier I mean they've conceded eight goals now in the last two weeks and uh, I'll tell you what if it wasn't for Driscoll it would have been probably ten well Driscoll was taken off injured last week to be replaced by Reef Murphy so he wasn't in net for all four of those last week we're looking to engineer something hope now to Via he gave it away Voice. doing well to slide in there Josh Hope to work it forwards to Via to his left for Kadakpo on the ball for Hope but the edge of the area was brought down free kick right at the edge of the box A long way back for Green Gully, but if they were to score here, it would potentially set up quite the finish of this game. They would need this and a lot more to go their way, though, mind. It'll be Gianluca Iannucci to take. Can he replicate what the opposite number 10 did? in the first half and score for a free kick. Gianluca Iannucci! Well palmed away by Feely, that was on target and it was a save he had to make. Down away to his right there, Nick Feely. Had to keep that one out. It was a save you're expecting to make, but he had to make it nonetheless. One 
and sent in towards Shrivers who headed wide and that will allow Asad Kasumovic to come on for Oakley. Made his first match day squad a couple of weeks ago against Dandenong City after coming back from injury. That makes his second league start in Oakley Blue after he was released from Adelaide United. Yeah, the men's competition, he will take the place of Pierce Waring, so seven off and 47 on. appearances in his career 47 you were calling an odd number there Arthur and you potentially might be right but when you consider his initials AK AK 47 would then make a little bit more sense that's surely why he's done it as Inucci looks to clip it over the top Ahmed giving chase Kadakpo looking to get clear of Eliopoulos he couldn't quite but that's because he was fouled Eliopoulos having a handful of his shirts. And that will send Oakley down to 10. Oliver Kubelay rather. Red card had been brought out for a second yellow. Get last one, yeah, you Jacob Eliopoulos is making his way off. And so Oakley are now down to 10. Plenty in attendance that don't agree with the call, but it's one that's been made regardless. And Green goalie with the man advantage now have to make use of it. I thought both players were holding on to each other's jumper. Yanucci to send in. And it's wide in the end. Jay! Jay! I had off Kadakpo. This will allow a chance for Greg Siamoa to make an appearance, taking the place of Jay Chiama. Greg Siamoa, a Samoan youth international, played for them. It's under 19 and under 23 level. So it locally down to 10. And that presents a chance for Green Gully to get one to get within two. There's not much time left, so you wouldn't think they'd be able to win it from here, but I suppose stranger things have happened. Holmes. Salmon. Finally for Guest. And across for Wellsmore. Salmon there in the middle. Cross was blocked and behind for an Oakley corner. Sad Kasumovic trying to get himself involved there. Corner sent in. High up into the air. Kasumovic. Now with Wellsmore. 
towards Kasimovic, who looked to drive it in towards the middle. Had one by Holmes. Hope. Good for the defending by Sinclair, who then played it off Iannucci. Out for an Oakley throw. Passed on by Adis. Sliding challenge was a strong one by Spiteri, who, as we've mentioned, has shown something since coming on. Adis. Claire. Now Adis again. Hard to play for a goal kick and a big moment this. Both for Oakley and for Connor Hampson, who's spent the last few weeks out of the side. And he's now back amongst it with the cannons. It was rather strange to see him out of the squad of course it was through injury but he was so remarkably consistent last season playing 27 league games for Oakley last campaign after moving across from Curzon Ashton Iannucci and ball from Kasumovic. Yanucci. Gianluca Yanucci. It's Oakley crowd, Green Gully out. Holmes, away from the couple. Noah Holmes, driving forward. Enterprising stuff from Noah Holmes, who looked to do it all himself and bit off more than he could shoot. Went on a fair gallop then, did the former Western United MPL talent, but wasn't effective in creating a chance. Hope, slips as he played it. Guest. Salmon. And Josh Hope is in a fair bit of pain off the ball. As Boy slid, slid in. Chested down by Guest, who's on a hat trick. Joe Guest. Now with Asad Kasumovic. Roll it by his marker in Jamie Latham. Only now is Josh Hope starting to try and rise to his feet. And he's having trouble doing so. And to watch from a green goalie point of view, especially so late on in the piece. Sinclair. Kasumovic to his left. Now Joe Guest over towards the right hand side for Salmon. Sinclair's there in the middle, and Salmon went alone and almost made it five. And now, Josh Hope will receive some attention. Apparently from down below, it's only cramp for Josh Hope, which will come as a mighty relief, because when you see a player go down like that as Josh Hope did, you fear for the worst and it was a rather innocuous one off the ball and so when that happens you're hoping for anything but the absolute worst and it looks as though it will be cramp and only cramp which while painful 
isn't a bad scenario as opposed to what it could have been. Into the final minutes of the 90. If it is only cramp, he's finding it hard to move and put weight on it. And we'll get six added minutes at the end of the 90. And quite often when it's a one-sided scoreline and you know what the result's going to be, sometimes you see a reduction in added minutes. Not here. There is confirmation. I suppose there has been a lot of substitutions and we've had a red card and we've had a couple of goals. So six minutes when you tally all that up, it's probably fair. Josh Hope. There's a couple of green gully players getting each other's way. Shrive looking to move it away. Play that out of play. Sinclair. Guess getting out of his way. Gets the ball, Joe Guest. It's the inside left channel for Sinclair. One more. Asad Kasumovic really should score. And it would have done wonders for him personally after a slow start to the season via injury. But Asad Kasumovic spurning the chance. Might not mean much in terms of the results, but it's one he would surely like back. Hampson played it back for Feely. Hampson. Guest knew he was offside. Kasimovic looks to run it down himself and couldn't quite. Almost had it taken off his toes by Holmes, who then went again. Sevilla keeps it in play. Dakpo back with Sevilla. Shrivers looking over towards the green gully left, but it was poor ball for Jalil Regeig. Kadakpo looking to try and breeze past Sinclair. He did well, cut it back! And it was a teasing, tantalising delivery from Adolf Kadakpo, but no one able to get on the end of it. Spiteri high in towards the middle. Regeg on the volley, wouldn't quite break for Ahmed. Holmes for Guest, who had kept himself on side, but the first touch wasn't up to his lofty high standards. Oh, 
If you take it uh, on the score, um, uh, Green Gully have really matched it this half with uh, the Cannons, even though the Cannons have missed some absolute sitters. 4-1 scoreline is probably, you know, uh, a lot better than what it seemed to be at the end of that uh, first half. And now the Oakley Cannons are staring at the three points with probably a minute left on the clock. Here's Sinclair. Back with Salmon, who's inside the area where he does his best work. Alex Salmon wouldn't quite break for Joe Guest at the top of the six-yard box. It's been a tale of two halves, really, for Liam Driscoll. He made one good save at the end of the first half, but particularly since conceding the free kick goal that he got a hand to and almost kept out, he's... Had a great second half. He didn't really cover himself in glory with the Minibadis goal, but has responded well after an early Oakley onslaught. Kadakpo. Inside the area he goes. Back for Latham. Yanucci. Dancing feet. And lost out to Holmes. Kubale. And then Kasumovic. Salmon calling for the switch on this near side. That's where the ball goes. It's a wonderful ball. It's a wonderful touch. Alex Salmon inside the area. To the byline he goes. A wonderful save from Liam Driscoll again. If not for him, this could have been a cricket score. Could have been seven or eight. Alex Salmon as time winds down. For Kasumovic. And there's the full time whistle, professionally done by the Oakley Cannons, who put away what was a poor green gully side in the first half. They were much better in the second, but the damage was already done. Chris Taylor sees his side win again, and Oakley still yet to taste defeat in the league so far this campaign. The Jack Edwards juggernaut rolls on. And claims another victim. Full-time score from Jack Edwards Reserve. It finishes Oakley 4, Green Gully 1. And Arthur, when you look at this game and what transpired, it's a scoreboard that perhaps flatters Green Gully in the end. And if not for their custodian, Liam Driscoll, it could have been many more. Well, I'll take my head off to Driscoll, uh, the goalkeeper's union, as we all stick together. But um, look, uh, even Nicholas Feely made a couple of brilliant saves too there. Uh, one from the free kick and one down low to his left. Uh, the volley from Mianucci. But in the end, uh, worthy winners, the Cannons. Four goals to one. It could have been a lot bigger than that, as we said. But it was good to see the youngsters coming on for the Green Gully. And uh, they did play a lot better in that second half. And... Hence, maybe the, the fact that they opened up a little bit more. There was a few more gaps there for the Cannons to try and uh, drill into. But all in all, three points, vital points for the Oakley Cannons. And they'll be up there in the top three yet again. And uh, with a game in hand, which they need to play with Danny on Thunder. But thanks from me, Arthur Akratides and Oliver. Thank you again, champion of champions. And... Uh, We'll see you again um, next few days. We've got more games to play. Port Melbourne versus the Heidelberg Warriors, just to name a few. And uh, thank you once again, Oliver. So from Arthur Akratides, myself, Oliver Walker Peel, and the rest of the crew here at the Jack Edwards Gantry, we'll bid you farewell. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye for now.